Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well and welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're going to dive a little deeper within the C rating realm and understand what exactly does that C rating mean. And we're going to do this because lithium polymer battery pack manufacturers really do not do a good job explaining the deeper details of the C rating and what all that means for us. Before jumping into the content here today, I did want to thank all of the patrons supporters thank you for your support there's about 57 of you right now and I could not do this without you it certainly makes my job easier being able to provide all this information here for anyone who needs it let's jump right into it and talk about the C rating this is quite a hot topic for the radio controlled world and the reason is is because manufacturers of lithium polymer battery packs have really not done a good job specifying and putting a value on the label of their lithium polymer battery packs. We know that these values, and we've shown and proven on this channel that the values that are placed onto a battery pack are not accurate. They do not represent the actual value of what a battery pack can dissipate, can discharge. And that brings us to our first question, exactly what is the basic understanding of the C rating of a lithium polymer battery pack? And essentially what that basic C rating value means is the total amount of of current that can be discharged from a battery pack, a lithium polymer battery pack, continuously. We take that C rating, we multiply it by the amp hour of a pack, and this is where we get the amount of amps that can be discharged from that specific battery pack. Now there are a couple different things that I want to point out before we get too deep into this, and one of them is, even when if you are buying a battery pack from the same manufacturer, and you're trying to compare different C rating values, even this alone can lead to inaccurate understandings or inaccurate lithium polymer battery packs as it relates to that discharge value. I've proven here on the channel that you can get a 45C battery and a 100C battery pack from the exact same manufacturer and have different performance results, even where that 45C battery pack is outperforming the 100C battery. This is truly amazing for this to happen, especially because it comes from the same manufacturer. Now the first point I want to bring to your attention as it relates to the continuous factor or continuous element of our discharge amount is the battery packs capacity. Obviously if we have a continuous value this is going to represent being able to discharge a battery pack at that specific C rating for the entire duration of a battery pack. There's a couple elements that I want to add on to this basic understanding so that we can really truly understand the C rating and what it means. Because a battery pack would be no good to us if we had simply exploded on us as we are using it or if it could not even provide provide any power or very minimal amount of power out of it even though it's rated for a high C rating and can actually output that C rating. The way we're going to do this is we're going to add on a couple other metrics to our C rating definition so it's not just about the amps that we pull but it's also about other parameters around that as well. And one of them is the temperature of the battery pack. When we're discharging a high amount of current from a battery pack we know that the temperature of that battery pack is going to increase and that's very true for all battery packs if any chemistry of any power level and when we discharge them at a high enough rate we can actually get the battery pack up to a temperature that where it begins to be unsafe and this is obviously not acceptable within our radio control vehicles so one of the parameters that we're going to introduce here is a maximum temperature threshold for the battery and that maximum temperature threshold is 60 degrees celsius but it goes even deeper from here i've tested numerous battery packs here on the channel that can't actually sustain sustain a simple 100 amp load and even when I stop the test at 60 degrees Celsius what happens to that battery pack as you probably could predict is that battery pack overshoots the temperature instead of just 60 degrees it actually sits there and heat soaks because the internal part of the battery pack is actually hotter than the measurement that I'm able to take and because of this I end up with a battery pack that in one case got up to 68 degrees Celsius even after I stopped it just before it hits 60 degrees Celsius. This goes to show us if we're operating a radio control vehicle and we hit temperatures above 50 degrees Celsius, we need to be very familiar with the battery pack to know if we stop the run right at that exact moment, will the battery pack hit 60 degrees Celsius? In order to actually 
be compliant with the C rating value, we have to make certain that the entire duration of the run and when the battery is resting, that the battery never exceeds 60 degrees. So that is the other element that we're adding in to the definition of a C rating for a battery pack. Now let's jump into another element that we're adding here to be part of the C rating definition for us here on this channel. And that is going to be related to the voltage that the battery is actually able to sustain. It's no good to us if the battery can dissipate 3 billion amps, but then we only get like a volt out of it at the end of the day. That's not going to be any benefit to our power system because we're going to have such a voltage drop. And the big reason why we go up in our C ratings is because we want to have less of a voltage drop contributing to more power that we can run through our radio control vehicles. And the best way for us to look at this is to see what kind of minimum are we able to have as an acceptable value. An acceptable value here is 3.2 volts. However, on the standard test that I do, the acceptable voltage value is 3.3. If a battery pack hits 3.3 volts, that essentially cuts the run and stops it at that exact amount of capacity that has already been discharged from the battery. We had that with a 5,000 milliamp hour. Even though it did not actually get too hot, it hit that voltage cutoff, signifying that the test is over from our standards test that we perform here on this channel. And to wrap up here, we have three performance metrics that we are considering when looking at the C rating of a specific battery pack. We know about the current, the discharge amount, that is the most obvious to us. The second item that we're gonna be paying attention to is the temperature. It's no good to us if a battery pack is able to discharge the correct amount in amps, but is not able to sustain a temperature that is in the range of being safe for us, which in general is less than 60 degrees Celsius, or about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the last element, it is no good to us if we can hit the current and we can hit proper temperatures, but we get a, a significant amount of voltage sag. And because of this, we are looking to maintain at least a minimum of 3.2 volts, if not 3.3 three volts per cell across all of the battery packs. If your battery pack can meet all three of these performance metrics, then you can apply a correct amount for the C rating of that battery. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.